Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay, so I'm getting ready to go absolutely nowhere <laughs> and I thought, let's just do a chat to get ready with me because I have thoughts as I always do. And to be quite honest, my get ready with me's are uh, like, whatever pops into my mind i just put it on a list in terms of like oh it'd be good to talk about that later so i literally just have a running list of things that i want to talk to people about so i just pull from them at random and here we go and today's video is kind of inspired by this whole new trend of de-influencing which can we just agree that that's an ante hole like yeah shop my stash you know like we create new ways for things that already exist but i'm not even gonna get into that but <laughs> the trend of de-influencing, I think, rose out of this idea that a lot of influencers, creators, whatever you want to call them, are just not trustworthy. And the only trustworthy person is someone that's telling you not to buy something. Which is a false equivalency, but that's neither here nor there. But that really what it is what inspired today's videos. So today's video. So I decided that I wanted to talk about kind of like the red flags that I see when I'm looking at content creators or influencers. Now, uh, before we dive in, I will be trying to use some new products. The star of today's video will be the Muse palette from Cosmic Brushes. This is a really nice brand, you guys. This palette is like 20, 20, 23 dollars, which is unheard of in this economy. And it's just a gorgeous sort of cool toned leaning palette that has a lot of greens purples i was really happy i got a chance to pick this up this is going to be my third time using it so it's not necessarily a uh, first impressions so i want to dive into this today and i'll probably try to pull out some other new products that i haven't tried that's kind of sitting in my makeup basket of shame all right i'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer and then we'll get started couple of quick disclaimers this is not the channel or the place if you think you're gonna get like that mean school girl kathy kind of drama kind of thing this is not what we're going for in this video so please don't take this as an opportunity to just bash creators or bash influencers that's not what we're here for so leave that negativity elsewhere secondly just a reminder that you hold the power as the person that's consuming this content as well as consuming products no one can force you to hit buy no one can host force you to hit play so if there is a creator that just doesn't rub with your spirit your vibe and you just don't like them <laughs> you don't have to watch so please know that you don't have to watch creators that you don't think are trustworthy or you don't like their vibe and you don't have to buy something that someone recommends like it is entirely up to you you hold the power all right i just wanted to say those two quick things now let's dive in I can already tell that I'm thinking about a look that's gonna look hella muddy, but I wanna try it anyway. I really wanna play around in this row here because I've used a lot of these shades, but I haven't touched these two mattes and they're cute and I wanna play with them. But I wanna play in the purple shimmers because I haven't used those either, but I don't think these are gonna go together. We gonna try anyway. And if you see the light doing things, I film in natural sunlight, so the sun does what the sun go do. So I'm going in with the first shade on Maya, which is kind of like a mustardy yellow shade. So like I was saying, th this video really was inspired by this sort of trend in de-influencing. And if we're being honest, the whole de-influencing thing, I think, really started to pop off because of the fact that, you know, Michaela did her video about Lashgate, uh, well, about them, the mascara that turned out to be lashes, allegedly. Um, and that really had everyone side-eyeing creators and influencers and i know a number of influencers themselves came out and was like you know this really puts a stain on the entire community this doesn't just affect her because it makes everyone look at creators like they're all lying which is true and and a fair criticism that others had and i think with that conversation i think we also started seeing people that were beginning to praise creators that are doing these sort of de-influencing videos, which are basically telling you, here are the things I don't think that you should buy. Now, these videos are not new. They're not anything revolutionary. If we're being honest, the Will I Buy It series and the anti-haul videos that people do are doing the same thing. They're telling you, like, here are the products that I don't think you should buy, or here are the products that I'm not buying, and here's why. So it wasn't anything new or revolutionary, but by framing it with 
they would de-influencing. I think it created this, like I said, false equivalency that, oh, they're telling me not to buy it. They must be trustworthy, which is not true or not necessarily true. So I, you know, started thinking about like, what are the red flags that I look for when it comes to deciding who are the creators that I watch, who are the creators that I consider to be trustworthy and, and what I consume. And to be quite honest, at the end of last year, there was just like a switch in my brain that flipped and this yellow is doing nothing, but we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> there was a switch that flipped in my brain that was basically like, I need to declutter a lot of things from my life. And that included, you know, like material things, makeup, clothes, all of that. But it also included decluttering or taking a more critical look at the content that I was consuming. Like I was subscribed to a lot of creators. And, you know, when I really took a look at the type of content that I was consuming, not all of it really vibed with me. And I had to let go of some of the creators that I had been following for several years because it just no longer served me. And I just felt like I needed something that was maybe a little bit more positive, a little bit more authentic in my life. So I, I really did do like a mass unsubscribe from a number of folks. And the more I curated the list of creators that I was watching, the more I realized that there are specific things that are like pet peeves to me or things that, really annoyed me um, that creators do that led to them being like no longer part of the people that I follow or me sort of like really reducing how much I consume their content. So let's dive into this list. So I think the first red flag is an easy one and one that I think everyone here can agree on and probably the impetus for this video is, you know, creators that don't disclose that they're doing paid work, don't disclose that they're doing ads, don't disclose that they're doing sponsorships, or even don't disclose that they have received a specific product in PR. I think that that is the biggest red flag. Not only is it like a red flag, it is also illegal. <laughs> like we talked about in Lashgate, you know, there are laws about this, you know? Several years ago when content creation and influencing as a career was just kind of like not a thing, people got away with a lot. There was no requirement to disclose. There was no requirement to be as forthcoming as, they, as folks are now, but now they are. They are required to disclose and so in addition to it being required by law, I think there's also the issue where creators are not not disclosing, but looking for ways to talk about the work in a way that is slightly misleading. Because if we're being honest, it should take no time or effort at all to say hashtag ad, hashtag paid partnership, you know? But creators are now using these word semantics or these under, you know, just sly ways of referring to their work with brands so that people aren't really sure if they're getting paid or not. Like, you know, going back to Lashgate, it was the L'Oreal partner, Maybelline partner. Everybody's a partner now. Like, this ain't no law firm. You're not a partner you are being paid to create content for this brand. This is an ad, there it is. So when people do those types of shady things, it always rubs me the wrong way. And I know that this is a lot more common on the, the TikTok place, the short form content place, where people are calling themselves partners and using all of these fancy Nancy terms. And maybe this is something that brands are telling them or instructing them to do because I assume that that's part of where this is coming from. Um, let's go on with this really rich chocolate brown. I haven't used that shade yet. I don't know where this look is going, but ugh, I'm worried. And yeah, so like I was saying, I, I do think that some of it is coming from the brands and how they are instructing these creators to refer to their work. But as a creator, I think that you have to remember that it's your credibility that's on the line. Like the brands will be fine. They will go on to create products and sell products. But at the end of the day, your entire business model is based off of having the trust of your followers. So you need to be careful with how you go about not disclosing or disclosing paid work in a way that just seems fishy and shady as hell. Like just say it's an ad or you know, like in addition to not naming something as an ad, there's the other issue of folks placing the disclaimer 
somewhere that no one is going to find. <laughs> Because if you are doing an ad and you use the hashtag ad, but yet you bury that hashtag in the middle of like a bunch of other hashtags, no one ever looks past what maybe the first three hashtags. So you may not put it in a place where people can see that it's an ad. And the sad reality, the sad thing about this is that these social media platforms have made it ridiculously easy to disclose that something is an ad. They have created the paid partnership banner that literally pops up and says, this is a paid partnership. So it should be as simple as flicking the switch on that button that says, yeah, I'm getting paid to talk about this product. So I think that makes it even worse when you see creators do these shady things and be very sneaky about how they disclose their work with brands when these platforms have made it unbelievably easy to just say, yes, I'm getting paid for this week. You know, this isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I may be okay. So the second red flag that I wanna talk about is kind of along the same lines of this sort of paid relationship with brands. And that is, you know, when creators do sponsorships with brands or companies for products that just don't make sense. I think we all know that for the most part, as a creator, we all have niches. like. If you are watching this channel, you can probably, if someone asks you what my content is about, you would probably say, yeah, she does beauty content. She talks about makeup, she talks about skincare. And I think that if someone asks you about any creator that you follow, you could very easily describe, you know, this is the type of content that they create. So whenever I see creators promoting products or brands that don't align with their niche, it does make me question how authentic that ad or sponsored post or whatever it is because it's like me creating beauty content and then trying to sell you like car parts. It doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't align. And I think there's something to be said with, um, to be said about that. And I'm not saying that it doesn't align all the time because let's be real, we're not a monolith. Like we have different interests. We have other things that we, uh, involved in for example i love hiking it's one of the things that i really enjoy but i don't think i would ever come on this platform on this channel which is a beauty channel and start trying to sell you guys hiking boots <laughs> like it would feel extremely weird and out of place it's not something that i talk about in terms of like my hobbies on this platform so i could see you my uh, my viewers looking at me like why is she trying to sell us hiking boots like and i could see that being something where you all lose trust in me because it seems inauthentic. It doesn't seem real. So I think it's it's something that you, as a viewer, you have to kind of try to suss out for yourself. This is not picking up very well on a brush, but I'm gonna go with my finger. You know, try to suss out, is this something that feels like real and authentic? Or is this something that is just so left feel that you don't really trust and believe it? And, and that can be a little bit hot. But I think as a, um, as a creator, I think you, the creators, we also have a responsibility to make sure that we are putting out content that feels authentic and true to our niche, true to our vibe. So like I said, even if I know that I like hiking, if I were to be offered the opportunity to promote or do a sponsored post on, on hiking boots, it, I don't think it would, it would be something that I would accept because it just would not make sense for me or my audience. You know, like I've had brands reach out to me about things that I'm just like, that just doesn't even align with my content. Like it doesn't make sense for me to try to work with you on this product because it just doesn't align with the type of content that I create or what I think my audience would be interested in. So when I do see creators promoting products that just feel kind of like left feel, I always give that a second look, side eye a little bit because I'm like, why are we talking about this? Why are you talking about this, you know? Like I said, this is the third look that I'm doing with this palette. And I will say that I'm enjoying this probably a little bit less than the Cosmic, um, the Serenity palette because I feel like the shimmers in this one are just a little bit more difficult to use, harder to pick up, even with a finger. It's kind of weird because I feel like when I use my finger, it picks up on the finger, and then when I try to like tap it into the lids, it stays on my finger. Like, it just doesn't want to transfer from my finger to the lids, but it also doesn't want to pick up with a brush, so I'm kind of like at a loss 
for how to use this, to be quite honest. Is it terrible? No. I mean, the palette's also $23 for 20 shades, so I can make it work for that price, but it's definitely not the easiest to work with. So I went in with the two purple shades, and then lastly, I'm going to go in with the pink shimmer shade. It's called Muse. Oh, it's actually called the name of the palette. Um, and I'm going to put that in the inner third. I don't know if you can see how like it's struggling to pick up on this brush. This is definitely more of a gold than a pink. Okay, so I'm going to leave the eyes like this for now. Quickly clean things up a little bit, and let's get started on the face. Okay, I don't have any primers that I want to open, but I do have this little baby size of the Milk Hydro Grip that I am trying to empty. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as well as I'm going to use my Lancome Taunty Doll Foundation. I actually think that they're discontinuing that because it's on sale for like 20 something dollars. So if you like it, you might as well get it now before they released a new one. These eyes are looking so much better than I thought. Look at that. And I tell you guys, I just be slapping some stuff on my face and hoping that it turns out into a look. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay, so the third red flag that I want to talk about is one that I think is, again, another obvious one, and that is filters. And I think this is, again, mainly a problem that exists in the short form content that is on like the TikToks and the Instagrams and the Snapchats and whatever, because those platforms are designed with the ability for you to add a filter really easily. And I think that this is becoming an increasingly big problem because of how, I wanna say realistic a lot of these filters look. Like the technology has improved significantly from when filters first were a thing to the point where these filters can give you lashes, they can clear up your acne, they can cinch your nose or your um, cheekbone, give you cheekbones and all of that. And sometimes it can be really hard to tell if a filter is on. And I think that there are some creators that take advantage of that and utilize that when they are reviewing products, which is 0% helpful. If I'm trying to figure out how a product performs, the fact that you have a filter on your face helps me in no way, shape or form whatsoever. And I just, you know, I found myself in the last couple months really just kind of unfollowing people that heavily filter their videos, heavily edit their pictures and their content in a way that it feels like they look like a caricature of themselves than an actual person. And that is just not my aesthetic, not my vibe. So I want to see how the product performs, how it looks on regular, degular lay person. You know, I've said this before, I'm not a makeup artist. I have no formal training in this. I'm literally making this shit up as I go along in terms of my makeup application <laughs> and hoping that it comes out okay. So, you know, I'm looking for people that can show me how it looks on someone who doesn't have the skill that a makeup artist has um, to make certain things look like it's runway ready, you know? So when people use filters and these highly edited things to show a product and to emphasize, over emphasize the claims, it just is like the biggest red flag. And again, like I said, I know it can be difficult to really tell if something is being filtered. Um, so it, it can catch you off guard. And I think there's also the fact that maybe it's not even being filtered, maybe it's just the way in, things, in which things are being produced. For example, a lot of these larger creators that operate in this space, they have a beauty filming room where they have studio lights. They have all of these different technologies that make it look better, you know? I'm sitting in my bedroom filming in front of a window. Not saying that it's bad to have studio lights because I do think that in a lot of cases too, it can help the quality of your videos, especially if you don't have natural light coming in or, you know, it's winter time, the sun sets a lot earlier and you need additional time to film. So those, you know, lighting can be really, really important. But I think it's just about, you know, the, the transparency of it all and letting folks know that when you film something in studio light, it's gonna look very different than when you go outside and you're wearing it in natural light. It's the same with like you buy something in Sephora and then when you get home and you're like, oh, this did not look like that in the store. It's that same effect, you know? So now when I look at creators, I try to find those that offer me 
more real world, true world scenarios that I can like be like, yeah, okay, I see how that product performs in natural light on someone who has probably the same skin level as me, skin tone, all of that. Now for concealer, I've been testing out these two new ones. Uh, first is the Kosas concealer and then is the Sephora Best Skin Ever. Um, this Kosas concealer is orange. This is the shade 8 Warm and this shit is orange. I... <laughs> never buying this again and the sephora best skin ever uh it's actually nice it's a really nice one i have this in 35 n i also have it in two other shades so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take 35 n i'm gonna apply that to the inner part of the eye and then we'll take that orange ass Kosas concealer and put it on the outer part and blend those two together i do think that taking the color aside i prefer the formula of the best skin ever over the Kosas one Plus, you know, Kosas is very natural, clean, which means that their products have a very short shelf life. So I think this is only six months, which is extremely short in my opinion. Yeah, that has a six month shelf life. And I can already feel like this will go bad faster than that because I don't like the smell of this. And I just got it too. Can we get brands to acknowledge that nobody is orange? Nobody is the color of an Oompa Loompa. And warm does not mean orange, like, for the love of everything. I don't know why these brands want me to look like a baby Oopa Loopa. Okay, next up, sticking in the vein of, like, you know, the weird filters, I have to mention the editing. Weird editing. And again, <laughs> I'm not raining or, or, like, you know, shitting on TikTok, but a lot of these things happen in these short form content type platforms, like TikTok, Instagram. Um, because of the fact that you don't have a chunk of time to be able to show how a product performs. So you'll see, you know, creators when they're doing their videos, they have these very sharp, drastic cuts from like application to final products. And with that, it can be very hard to tell what happened in between. Like, did it not blend? Did it blend well? Did you experience patchiness? Did you have to go in and fix it and things? Um, and, you know, a lot of that you just can't tell yet by the nature of the content. But then there are times when you see a jump cut and you're like, wait, that don't even make sense. <laughs> like, how did you get from there to there? Like, and that is one of the things that I look for when it comes to like red flags in terms of content. Like if I'm seeing these weird cuts that go from like application to blending out or whatever it is to final product and it just doesn't seem like you got from step A to step B in a realistic way, I get confused. So, you know, that that is definitely one of the red flags that I look for. And again, it can be really hard to tell the difference in terms of like, is this the product happening or is this like an over exaggeration of the claims of the product? You know, like, is it that this is actually giving me length and volume in terms of my lashes or are those false lashes because there's this weird jump cut in the middle? Is it that this powder is mattifying and blurring my pores or is there something else that's mixed in that I'm not seeing? And I don't know, it just, it just reminds me of how much I really dislike short form content because you don't get those questions answered. Like you don't get to see the in-between. And granted, some of that happens in long-form content as well. Like, you guys know, you will see when I transition in my um, application, like, and that is because I don't think anyone wants it, an hour-long video where 20 minutes of it is me just blending. That just <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense. But because of how stark the jumps are in short-form content, I, I feel like it's definitely worth calling out because it don't make sense to me a lot of times what the final product turns out to be where after they've like done like the weird demo application. I have this Essence Brighten Up powder that I, my girl Yadi recommended. And this shit is light as hell. So, whew, I don't know, but I haven't used it yet. So let's try it. Just dipping lightly into it. And I'm gonna use that to set my under eye. Oh, it's not bad not as stock. It might not pass the flashback test, but 
doing a nice job setting. And I think this is like, what, maybe $3? Y'all don't sleep on Essence. They got some decent products for the price. Yeah, look at that. So this is it set. This is not set. Okay. It's definitely adding brightness. I'll give it that. Okay, let me not overdo this because y'all saw how white that was. And I'll take the 16 hour coven last powder foundation and I'll use it to set the rest of my face. Okay, for bronzer, I do have the Kosas bronzer in the shade Deep. Oh, that's pretty. It looks hella red. I also have this Essence bronzing palette thing. Hmm. Plus, I have a bronzing palette from BH, well, old BH. It also comes with highlighters. Let's go in with this one. I'm gonna try to go in with Paradise. Why the hell did I buy this, y'all? Sometimes I'll be looking at my purchases like, Jamila, you didn't need this. Like, what am I gonna do with these two? Don't ever buy bronzing palettes. Let me let me just give you guys a tip on that now because 99% of the time, you're only gonna use one, maybe two shades, and then all the other shades in it are just gonna be a waste of time. These two do not bronze me, so there was absolutely no reason for me to buy all of this. Okay, so I'm going with the shade Paradise. Oh, that's cute. So, like I said, weird edits, you know, these really interesting jump cuts or whatever other things that they put in their video to make a product look more appealing. That is just something that I'm always a little bit wary of. And even the ones that don't, may not add anything to make the video more appealing, but may just be doing these weird application techniques that uh, just don't make sense. You know like that girl that pumps out like a bajillion pumps into her hand and then smears it all over her face? Don't like that. Or when people were doing the KVD balm foundation thing and they would just smear like a whole streak of foundation on their face. Like no one applies their makeup like that. So when I see people doing these absolutely ridiculous application techniques that, um, that might be hacks, might not be hacks, I'm always like, please stop so those are the things that I wouldn't maybe they're less red flags and more like pet peeves for me but those are the things that I look for in helping me decide who I'm not going to watch so there is a little bit of shimmer in this bronzer okay it's very light though but it's nice not bad I'm gonna dip a little bit into the deeper shade which is a little bit more red Mixed together, both of these are beautiful. Ooh. Speaking of weird application techniques, the other red flag for me is the over-the-top reactions. Like, I get it, makeup is exciting. Sometimes you try a product and you're like, like, you know, you have like a physical reaction to the product. But I hate when I see these stitches of people that are just like over, like they're just overly dramatic. And to me, that always like feels like a red flag because nothing, especially in this makeup world, is that dramatic. And maybe it's just me, but it just always feels forced. It always feels inauthentic. It always feels kind of ridiculous and stupid. <laughs> no, again, no shade. I'm not saying this to make anybody feel bad, but I always find it really annoying. And I really, struggle with those dramatic over the top reactions because to me it's like it does feel like you're forcing the product on me you're trying to oversell me on the product like let the product speak for yourself if you apply it to your face and it looks good you're like oh nice. this is nice but when it's like oh my god this is the best thing ever it has changed my life no one will ever be able to compete with this you will never find another product like this like sis now you know good and well, you doing too much. And that has always been really annoying for me to see when people are giving these like over the top reactions to products that aren't even that big a deal. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, like Nikki Tutorials is actually one of the people that I recently unfollowed because I feel like her short form content is almost exclusively that type of like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it just, 
I, I don't like it. <laughs> but again, that's my pet peeve. That has nothing to do with Nikki as a person. I don't even know this girl from Adam. Um, I just find it annoying and it just doesn't vibe with how I like to watch my content. So like I said in the beginning, you have the power to decide what you want to consume. And I just decided that that wasn't for me. Now I understand some people have very effervescent, bubbly, like reactions personalities where they do you know talk a lot with their hands and they express things a lot in like you know just these big vast ways and that's fine if that is like who you are as a person completely fine but I don't believe that a lot of the people that are doing these things in their content are really like that 100% of the time or that they really truly feel as passionate as they present in these videos where they're like falling in love with this product and claiming it to be the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, now for blush, I've been actually putting this off for a while because this is probably another product I shouldn't have bought, but I do have the Moon Prism Blush Palette from Luna Beauty. It just looks so light. Why did I buy this? I don't even know where to go with this because it is such a light looking blush palette. I'm gonna try to use this peachy shade here. Oh, that looks like ash. Okay. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Okay, cool. Cool, babes. So this isn't doing anything. I'm gonna try to go down and use the pinky one. I'm trying to, I'm gonna do my best, y'all. Okay, we're getting a little bit of, oh, Jesus. We're getting a little something. <laughs> okay, it's extremely light, so I wanna add a little bit more color. So I'm gonna try to go in with this Bobbi Brown blush single. It's in the shade Clementine. Pick this up at the CCO. I wanna see if that adds a little something. Okay, that's definitely giving more color than the palette did. Oh, that is pretty. Okay. Ooh, now we got blush. For highlight, I'm gonna go back into the palette that I use from BH for bronzer, and I'm gonna take the lighter of the two shades, and I'm gonna use that as my highlight. Oh, it's pretty. And like I always do, I'm gonna use that as my brow bone highlight. Okay, so let's go back into the eyes for a little bit to finish up the waterline. Um, and we're gonna keep going with this list, which is almost done. <laughs> so the next thing I wanna talk about, uh, you know, the next red flag for me is creators that only share the pros or only share the cons of a product. And I think that that's kind of obvious, right? Like most products have pros and cons. Like I don't think there's ever gonna be a product that is 100% perfect, there are no issues. Um, there's usually, you know, like things that are pros and cons to a product. And I always try to look for influencers who are, especially ones that are in the space where they review products, I try to look for the ones that are providing context in terms of giving me what are the pros and the cons. What are the things that work well with this product versus what are the things that don't work well. And I think that there is no value to having someone that's only on one side or the other. Like it's not helpful for me if you only give me all of the pros. Like, because then when I get the product and it doesn't work for me, I'm gonna be annoyed. And it, all, it also is equally not helpful for you to just share what's wrong with the product because it doesn't give the full picture. And there's always a little bit of nuance when it comes to products, especially products in the beauty space because I think that that leads into my, my last point, which is, you know, in addition to creatures that only share the pros and the cons, you know, it, it is a red flag for me when creators say that they hate or they love something and they don't give a lot of context as to why. Like, why do you like this? Why is this better than whatever else you have in your collection or whatever else is on the market? Like, there needs to be nuance to this because at the end of the day, we all have different preferences and we all have different needs. So if you say that you like a product because 
it is extremely hydrating to your dry skin that automatically lets me know that that may not work for me and i think it's really important for creatures to provide that context because we don't all have the same skin type we don't all have the same skin tone we don't all have the same makeup preferences and that's why we turn to creatures to, to try to figure out is this going to work for me and i think that was something that i had to learn in terms of like how i curated the people that i follow because when i was really looking at some of the platforms that i follow i realized that some of them just don't align with my interests my makeup taste my makeup application style and most importantly my skin tone and my skin type like i <laughs> I'm a little ashamed to say how many products that I have purchased off of the recommendation of white creatures that I get and I'm like this shit is ashy as hell on me and you know it reiterates why it's so important to have representation in this space especially in the beauty space but also why it's so important to as consumers of this content to really curate your you know the people that you view in a way that makes sense for you because like i said i have seen you know a lot of products that creators rave about that don't look like me and then when i finally find a creator that does look like me use it it's oftentimes very different in terms of the reaction um or if i do buy it myself i'm oftentimes disappointed because <laughs> it doesn't work the same and that you know is essentially my fault i should have known better and it's not even just on the skin tone piece, which is very important, but it's also skin type because I don't have dry skin. So whenever I see people complain about a product being too drying, I'm always I'm always like, for you, but that might be perfect for me. Um, I think that's why it's so important, again, for creators to provide context, to provide nuance. Like, if you don't like something, tell me why you don't like something just don't try to say a product is terrible without giving context because that's not a great representation of the product okay and last i'm gonna take this green shade i'm gonna use that in the lower parts of the eye okay i'm gonna finish up the rest of my face and i'll be right back to end off this video okay i'm back this is the final look she cute i didn't go in with anything new for my lips i'm just using my tracy lip from sydney grace which is like a holy grail at this point and a liner from blend bunny i'm not sure what this one is called because it doesn't have a name on it but she cute all right um before we get into my thoughts on these products i did want to end off on sort of like two other red flags that I forgot to, to mention. Sorry, I'm looking at my list right now, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I talked about them. So the first one that I wanna talk about is sort of the creator, the influencer that is always trying to get you to run and purchase something. Now, this is something that I have you know, caught myself doing in the past where it's like, oh my gosh, run, you need this. And I think that that sort of language is for me, a red flag now. Whenever a creator is like, you absolutely need this, you must buy this, you have to have it, it always strikes me as a little bit like cringy because especially in this beauty space, we don't need any of this. Like this is not a need whatsoever. And I think that there's already so much FOMO in the beauty community because when things launch, everyone wants to buy it, you wanna be on top of it, that having creators give you that extra push of like, oh run, you absolutely need to get this, it can be very overwhelming. So I've definitely had to like unfollow, unsubscribe a lot of people that I feel like are just pushing you or pushing me to buy things because I always it always strikes me as a red flag. Now granted, I think that there are occasions where it is helpful when people are like, okay, you might wanna move with a little bit of urgency here. And I try to reserve that for situations where there's a glitch in the matrix and something is happening that's not supposed to be happening. For example, and I give this example before, but when Pat McGrath had a sale and then there was a secret code for his staff that got leaked and you were getting motherships at 40 something dollars, which, and they were, you know, they're 125, $129. So in that situation, I was like, y'all better get on this because this is not supposed to happen and this is gonna get turned off. So I think that there are situations like that where it's like, you really should be, 
you really should be moving with a little bit of quickness here. I'm fine with that, but I feel like sometimes when I see creators review things or, you know, there is even like a minuscule sale, it's kind of like run, don't walk, you need to buy this. No, you don't. You don't need it to begin with. And then secondly, chances are there's gonna be another sale, especially if it's a recurring sale. So like things like Pat McGrath having a 30% off sale, y'all know that's just another Tuesday. So if you miss it this time, you're gonna get it the next time. So there's not a real sense of urgency with a lot of those things. And then the last thing that I wanna mention is pay attention to the way in which creators react to certain social issues. Now hear me out. I understand for a lot of us, including myself, this is a safe space. This is where you come to have fun. This is where you come to decompress. Like I don't need all of the creators that I follow or want all of the creators that I follow to be so, so, so social justice warriors. I don't need us to be fighting for every single issue. We all know that there's a lot going on in the world. There are a lot of things to be mad about from climate change to racism, to sexism, to homophobia, to um, cruelty free clean. Like there's just so many topical issues that I don't expect or want the pages that I follow to be a slew of political, like, here's what's going on. I already kind of work in the policy field. I get it every day at work. I don't need it. But I say pay attention to how they respond to social issues because I think that there are times when silence speaks volumes. And there are also times when speaking speaks volumes. And I say that because I feel like you know, a couple of years ago, when issues about black people were prominent, everybody had something to say. Everybody posted their little black squares. Everybody was like pro-black and, you know, it kind of became the thing where it was trendy to speak out and to be extremely vocal. And since then, a lot of that has died down and a lot of people aren't saying things anymore. So I'm always looking to see who are the creators that are speaking out and when are they speaking out? Are you only speaking out because it feels like it's a trendy, cool thing to do and everybody else is doing it and if you don't do it, it's gonna look bad and you're gonna lose followers and it's gonna be a hot ass mess? Are you? Or are you speaking out because it's something that genuinely resonates with you, it sits on your spirit and you feel like you want to speak out? Again, like I said, I don't expect everybody to be up and rah, rah, rah all the time, but I do look for the ones that are saying things if it is coming off as this is something that's coming from a genuine place and you are genuinely invested or it feels like this is the trendy, cool thing to say that will get me brownie points. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't wanna dive too deep into it because that might be a whole other conversation for a whole other day, but it is something that I pay attention to and it is probably one of the biggest red flags for me when I feel like my, the issues that matter to me are trendy to you and you're just using it for clout or for show. All right, we gonna end there. Let's talk about the makeup that I'm wearing on my face and how I feel about it. Okay, we're gonna start from where we started, the eyeshadow palette. So this is the Muse palette from Cosmic Brushes, like I said. I really like the Cosmic Brushes brand because I do think it's extremely affordable. Now this is a UK based brand, so if you are in the UK, I 100% recommend that you check this out because I think that for the price, this is absolutely phenomenal. And this is on par with and even better than some of the products that we have on the US market. And if you can get it at the UK market, save customs, save shipping. I definitely 100% recommend it. So um, I like the palette. I do think that there are some issues that I had with this that I didn't remember having with the Serenity palette. The matte perfection, and y'all know, mattes can make or break a palette for me. So I wanna start off by saying that the mattes was work really well. This shade here, this kind of mustardy yellow shade, didn't really do anything for me, but let's be real. Look at the shade, look at the complexion of my skin. I kind of expected it to not do much. So unless I had put on a really light base or white base, I wasn't really expecting it to show up that much and it, it didn't, which is fine. Uh, other than that, all of the other mattes blended well. I really like these two purple pinky shades, but I will say that they are somewhat close to each other and I have used both of these together and they're close. They're close enough that we didn't need both of them in this same palette. The shimmers I think are really nice. However, there are a couple of different things going on with the shimmer formula in here. This purple shimmer is actually like a satin, but I don't know if it's because it's really tightly packed or what, but it doesn't pick up well on a finger or a brush. And then when you do get it on your finger, it doesn't transfer to the lids, which is 
problematic. I needed to be on my lids, not on my finger, not in the pan. So that was a struggle. But there are some like these three shades that feel a little bit more loose, more glittery, more sparkly, and easy to pick up and easy to transfer. This shade here, however, and even these three shades, I felt like had a little bit more putty-like of a texture. So they were a little bit harder to pick up to the brush and transfer. So just overall, in terms of the shimmers, I felt like I had a little bit of extra work working with these shimmers than I wanted it to. That being said, I do have to take the price of this palette into account. Like I said, 20 something dollars, you were able to use a code that gave you 10% off. So I think for the price, the quality on this is superb and I would 100% recommend this. And I especially wanna recommend it to my followers that are living in the UK because I do think that sometimes the price that you all pay for shipping and customs for some of these American based brands just doesn't make it worth it in my opinion. Next up, let's talk about concealer. So I showed you guys these two sort of new concealers to my collection. So the coarsest one, I really don't like it. I don't like the formula and I especially don't like the color. Like I said, the color is orange and ain't nobody orange. I don't understand why brands assume that warm means orange. We don't want to be Oompa Loompas. Could we just accept that and stop creating orange products? Just please, maybe. So I didn't like the color in this. Didn't love the formula. It has a weird smell to it. It only has a six month shelf life. I don't know what Corsus is doing with this whole clean line thing, but whatever they're doing, I know that it does not make their products last very long. So I am forced to use this up very, very quickly because it only has a six month shelf life. So I'm gonna do my best. And I'm gonna have to mix it in with other shades because I do think that it is orange. The Sephora Skin, um, Best Skin Ever Concealer though, now that is a concealer. It does remind me a lot of like the e.l.f. or the Tarte. So if you do have dry skin, you may not like this because I do feel like it has a little bit of a drier texture and dry down than the Kosas one. The Kosas one definitely feels more liquidy, more hydrating. And as someone that tends to lean pretty oily in the T-zone, I guess that's also probably why I don't like this as much. Whereas this one does dry down a little bit better, but I don't see, I never saw it sinking into my fine lines or being like, you know, emphasizing any like texture or lines under my eyes. I didn't experience that. So I really enjoy that concealer so far. Now I set the concealer with this Essence Brighten Up powder, which it's a nice powder, to be quite honest. I feel like powder is one of those things that you could buy at the drugstore, you could buy high end. They all kind of do the same thing. They all mattify. I have yet to find a powder that to me is like so stand out that it feels like I wouldn't get the same any elsewhere. I will say the Jimmy Blend powder is probably the closest that I've found to that. But other than that, I find all powders do the same and the price is always a little bit different. So buy a cheap powder, don't spend too crazy amount of money on these powders because they all do the same for me. Now, I do not have issues with textures or fine lines or anything, so I feel like that's part of why my experience with powders is just kind of meh. But if you do have texture, I would definitely say find a creator that has issues with maybe texture, acne, fine lines, who can give you a better perspective on powders because it's just not my... My experience is that most of them work the same on me because my skin doesn't really have too much issues with it. That being said, however, I thought this powder was nice. I thought it definitely added a little bit of brightness to my under eye. I tried to go in very, very light with this because as you can see, very light, I am black. This, I think, will give you a white cast if you go in too heavy and you are a deeper complexion. But it's also like, what, two, maybe three dollars, so definitely worth a try if you will in the market for a new powder if you wanted an inexpensive powder that you would feel comfortable traveling with or something like that. Now, what I don't recommend you getting is this Moon Prism blush palette. This shit is actually on me. Now granted, these two would probably work well. This one kind of did show up on me, but three, hell, four out of these six shades are too light. I am probably gonna put this on my Macari because they're, I shouldn't have bought it. That's not there. I shouldn't have bought it. It's too light. I can build it up to get some color, but the reality is the more I build it up, because it is so light, it definitely does look a little light and ashy on me. I had that issue with a Chanel powder that I uh, blush that I had. So it's not one that I'm willing to try to work with. My collection is too big to sit here and try to make things work. So it might just be one that I declutter and pass on to somebody else. I'll probably give it one more try to try those two deeper shades to see how they look on me. Um, Cause they do look like it would be nice kind of everyday blushes, but yeah, I'm not sold on that. 
The Bobbi Brown blush, however, this is such a cute little baby thing. I would have never bought this on my own, but I'm pretty sure it was like either $5 at the CCO or like part of their six for 60 and I had to pick it up. But it's cute and it has really, really good color. I think that this is such a nice like everyday blush. Really impressed with that so far. And the last thing I think is this bronzer highlight palette from BH Cosmetics. I think that this is really nice. I do love how these two shades looked mixed together. And I like that the lighter of the two has a little bit of shimmer in there to give it a, a more of a glow. And I think that the highlighter that I used is nice. This one is probably too dark for me, but the highlighter up here is nice. <sighs> looking at my collection now and looking at how I am viewing makeup now, I will say that I would not have purchased this today because I think that bronzer palettes don't make sense unless you are a makeup artist. When it comes to bronzer, you typically have one shade that you can work with, and that's kind of what is what it is here. So I can use these two shades, but these two are definitely too light for me, and not even shades that I could use as like setting powder or in other areas of my face. So they're just being wasted in this palette. And then this highlight is too dark for me to use as a highlight. I would have to use it as an eyeshadow, and. I am probably never going to reach into this to use this as an eyeshadow. So when I look at this, it's like three out of the six aren't gonna work for me. So I think, you know, knowing what I know now, I, I'm at the point where it's like, I am not gonna be buying these like bronzer palettes and things and whatnot because it's such a waste, such a waste of money. Anyways, this is the final look. Those were all of my thoughts on influencer red flags, things that you might wanna be on the lookout for as you Think about who you're watching in this space and who you're going to for reviews and um, feedback and honest opinions. And I want to end on what I said at the beginning. Remember, you hold the power. If somebody does not jive with you, if you don't like what they're saying, if you don't like how they feel or how, how it feels when you watch them, trust your gut and know that you can hit unsubscribe, unfollow, and move on with your life. Trust and believe it is not that deep. You don't have to keep following these people. And in that same vein, you also do not have to buy anything that anybody is recommending to you. You have the power. You control what you consume both on your screen as well as what you consume with your actual hard-earned money. So make sure you take your power back, follow the people that sit well with your spirit, make you feel good, and that you enjoy, and all will be well. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so very much for hanging with me today. Leave your comments down below. I want to know what are the things that you look for, what are the red flags that you see, or the things that you see as green flags when you are um, deciding which of the creators that you want to follow, or how you determine which creators can be seen as, you know, trustworthy in people that are giving honest opinions in their content. Leave all of that in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video on your way out, and if you haven't already done so, I would absolutely love if you would subscribe and join the family for more content from me. As always, I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you for the support, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!